Lift up your two hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, we, we ask, we come to your throne through the blood. Through the, the veil that has been torn. The blood of Jesus Christ making a way for us to come to approach as sons. Not as aliens. We approach in the holiness of the son. In the righteousness of the son. In the sanctification of the son. In the obedience of the son. Lord, we come. In the justification of the son. In the peace of the son. In the reconciliation of the son. Lord, we come in the confidence of the son. In the name of Jesus Christ, the son. We come to receive help today against hindrance in every area and we know to the Lord when help is given from your throne victory belongs to us forever in Jesus name Holy Spirit will receive the full help of your help the full operation of your help we see in your sight we speak in your utterance we work in your workings and we are powerful in your might in the name of Jesus and the victory of Jesus is our victory. For we are made sons through the only son. And there is only one way, one truth, and one life. There is only one name given unto us for salvation. And that is the name that is our life, our all, in Jesus' name. Clap those hands like Jesus said. Come and celebrate, son. Clap those hands, come on, Father. Hallelujah. Maybe seated. Beautiful to have your family. I don't know how much you know about hindrance and hindrances. I don't know how much you know about the operation of hindrances. But by the grace of God today, God will add to our knowledge, our insight. The power of knowledge is this. Once you know, you are affected by what you know. The scripture says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Of course, we know that as believers, spiritual warfare exists. Our salvation in Christ Jesus, according to Colossians, is that we are transferred from the kingdom of the dominion of darkness, the kingdom of darkness, the dominion of darkness, into the kingdom, the dominion of the only son, where we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sin. We have redemption, we have the forgiveness of our sins. So, issue of salvation is kingdom issue. Say kingdom issue. That's what salvation is about. Salvation is a kingdom issue reality kingdom experience and when you talk about kingdom kingdom lives by power kingdoms don't live by begging no kingdom exists no kingdom stands on its knees every kingdom stands on its feet that's how the great britain amassed and mass and mass territories across and then also imploded and broke apart that is how russia increased and increased and increased and it reached a point it broke apart the war in ukraine right now is about kingdom that russia does not want nato to establish its power and its influence on his border that is already happening around Estonia, around Norway. But in Ukraine, it's like coming into the belly of Russia. It's their former territory. And um, so that's what the whole war in Ukraine is about. It's about kingdom. And if Ukraine will not fight, if people, the allies, the European, you know, um, EU and NATO, America will not give help to you. Ukraine to stand, what will happen is that Russia will swallow Ukraine and Ukraine will cease ex to exist as we know it now. As we, ex as we know it now. So, territories that cannot fight are territories that are taken over. 
territories that cannot fight. When it comes to kingdom operation, I'm not talking about kingdom as we know it now. Kingdom in its original form. The original form that we understand it in the biblical days, in the ancient days. The kingdom, if you don't stand, you are swallowed. If you don't stand, you are swallowed. So, the scripture is saying that we are transferred, conveyed, and translated from the kingdom of the beloved, uh, from the kingdom of darkness, from the kingdom, the dominion of Satan, into, into the dominion of the of his son, the dominion of the son, of his son, of his son, we are the of the son, of his we are born into the of his the interest of that kingdom is to take back what has been stolen or not, not stolen is that kingdom actually that stole the other kingdom is the kingdom of the thief the robber and no robber repents that's what they do the devil does not repent the scripture says he comes to steal to kill and to destroy so there is no repentance the devil cannot change his mind there is no repentance in the devil's kingdom. So those who preach that there is no repentance in the church, once you are born again, you can no longer have any reason to repent. They have to examine themselves. Only angels cannot repent or demons cannot repent. But humans, there will always be reason. You, you know better and you change your mind. That change of mind, metanoia in Greek, is repentance. A change of mind as a result of more information. As a result of realizing that you didn't do it well. Oh, that way, I didn't do it well. Oh, that thing, I didn't do it well. So you change your mind and take a better course and do it better next time. That is repentance in a specific way. So the devil doesn't change his mind. Jesus Christ came, broke the power of sin, broke the power of death, broke the power of hell, and delivered, took, king, took, took souls, destinies, from the thief, from the robber, and transferred to the kingdom of life and light, and the kingdom of darkness vows to take back. For those who have not been taken back, vows to make sure, vows to keep, that no one takes this one from me. And for those ones that have been taken, he vows to take back. That's why people are safe today, feel with the Holy Ghost tomorrow, the next day they go right back to living the life they used to live because the devil wants them back. The devil wants them back. And the only solution is standing. Say standing. That's what the scripture says. It is important we introduce this subject matter for you to know there is no grace that saves you from warfare. Grace delivers you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of the beloved son. And grace draws the line and puts you in that war front. That's what grace does. Now, the next thing that grace does is that it gives you victory. But victory comes through standing. What we need to do in our fight, the scripture talks about in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, it should be verse, verse, is it verse 3, verse 4, verse 5, that the weapons of our warfare, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war. We do not war. Come on, go to that verse. We do not war. Say war. That's it. The war we are talking about is not flesh war. It's spiritual war. We do not war according to the flesh. The one who writes this is the apostle of grace. The one through whom we understand grace in the New Testament. So every preacher of grace has understanding of grace to a large extent from this man who wrote Second Corinthians, second epistle, second letter rather, to uh, the Corinthians. Next verse, verse four says, "For the weapons of our warfare are not what canna, but they are what mighty we are in God. For what pulling down strongholds, pulling down strongholds." Next verse, next it says, "Casting down what arguments and every." high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into what? Captivity to the obedience 
This is a very serious and delicate dimension of spiritual warfare. This is completely different from what Paul is talking about in Ephesians chapter 6. As we read from verse 10, 11, 12, and forward. And he talks about, um, finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Next verse, 11. Come on. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to do what? Stand against the wiles of the devil. That means fight. The, the, the greatest fight, the only fight of a believer is stand. I have told you something about standing. To withstand. To set yourself against with the whole armor. That's the warfare of a believer. That's why you know the word of God. That's why you touch or you need to be touched the word of God. That's why you are filled with the Holy Ghost or should be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's why you wear the whole armor of God. You walk in truth. Live in salvation. Salvation as helmet on your, on your, on your head. Uh, the faith as your shield. Righteousness as your breastplate. The word as your sword. And all of that. And put on the whole armor. Verse, verse 12. Verse 12. Come on. For we do not wrestle against what? Flesh and blood. If you take that to that Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, that says, Though we are in the world, but the weapon of our warfare is not what? It's not color. Shout hallelujah. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk a According to the flesh, the weapon of our warfare is not carnal. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not carnal. It means spiritual. Spiritual here means we are not fighting flesh and blood battle. We are fighting spiritual battle. Okay. I just want to give you some understanding into the operation. And we have been transferred from the kingdom, the domain, the dominion of darkness. And this darkness, and this is what the scripture is referring to as principalities and powers, as the host of wickedness in the heavenly, rulers of the host of wickedness in the heavenly places. So, the believers, being saved by grace means being translated, being transported, being transferred from one kingdom to another. And this kingdom are opposing kingdom. The scripture in the book of Daniel talks about the angel that brought answer to the to the prayer of Daniel and the prince of Persia. This is spiritual reality. This is spiritual space. An angel is not a physical, an angel in this case is not physical messenger. It's spiritual messenger of God. Meeting spiritual prince, meeting spiritual sir, sir, a, a prince, an emperor. An emperor. The word that is translated prince in Hebrew is sir. It is from there we have the Tsar of Russia. It is about the emperor. It is about the king. It is about the ruler, the governor of Persia. So we are dealing with spiritual things. We are dealing with spiritual things. Rise, let me speak upon your life. That every wrong understanding that will rob you of spiritual oppression and victory against every form of hindrance in your life, I speak that that wrong understanding expires now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lift up your two hands. I hold captive every thought, every deceitful thought, every deceitful imagination, every deceitful thought, imagination, every seed of lie that has been sown into your mind through wrong teachings and wrong information. I speak that the lights of the word of God penetrating so fiercely will destroy every obstacle against true knowledge in your mind and your spirit, your soul and body in the name of Jesus. And as the word of God is coming, you, you will develop spiritual faculty. You will grow spiritual potency. You will grow spiritual maturity. You will grow spiritual ability. And what you say shall come to pass. When you say break, yoke shall be broken. When you say cut, bars shall be cut loose. When you say pull down, strongholds shall be pulled down. Say in the name of Jesus, I pull down strongholds, giving shelter to hindrance and the spirit of hindrance. Say I bring down 
strongholds, providing shelter to hindrance and the spirit of hindrance. Pray that prayer. Say, I bring down, I pull down strongholds. Talatata. Malabo shakata. I pull down strongholds. Sata prele kato. Zemende pro katala masikato. Labrosi anda kata. Gunoto masi apalabo shete. Labrosi manda kanda. Zemende pra kapole mozo telebra. Masi ando to pre kanda. Lapole makapala mozi kata. Lasi ato masi kanda. Zemende pra kapola brosi ata. Malabra kato masi kanda. Laboshi kata la brese kete. Malabro le pra la kando se kato. Malabra kando se pre kato. Malabre se kata. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me hear your amen like fire. Be seated, be seated. The understanding God has given to us about ministry and pastoral ministry and ministry in general is that it is not this or that. It is this and that and that. So as a pastor, there can be a temptation to emphasize one aspect of the life, the spiritual life. We can talk about certain beautiful things and sweet things of the kingdom, the beautiful, delicate, sweet things of the kingdom. And we feel excited, but, and we say, oh, and it's all about that. There is no aspect um, that causes bruises and um, and pain that will cause people to rise and get mad at the devil. That is the lie of the devil through the seductive or uh, the seductive teachings of these days of making everything look so beautiful and it's so ajibotali, so mbakara mbakarali, like oyibo oyiboli. You go to real white people, believers who have met the Christ. <laughs> it was warfare. They are deep things. People like Maurice Cerullo who had become the apostle of nations. Men who, who had been tested and proven. If you sit down under their teaching you will understand these men who met the Lord, who encountered the Lord. They understood this reality. And that is why what they had built, even after now that is gone, it is beginning to begin. Beginning to give. Those who have had that foundation, they have intergenerational inheritance that we can point to. But for those who just present this sugar cane kind of thing, sugar, sugar, sugar thing, so a sugar put under, put in, mixed with water, they don't start. So this thing, there is the world dimension. You have to be familiar, you have to be rightly taught. The other extreme about war is people who see everything when flies fly two times. Say, that must be a demon. Yeah, that must be a demon. Yesterday, I had to deal with somebody and uh, he will be praying that I, I will not talk about it. He said, you just need to have a meeting. Don't spiritualize this meeting too much. Just go and have this meeting. Don't tell me about signs about this meeting. That this meeting. This meeting is a meeting that must be held, right? Go and have that meeting. Then tell me what happens. Don't see too much spirit before the meeting. Tell me after the meeting. There are times you need to talk before you pray. There are times you need to, after praying, you need to do what? Talk. Some people, they just make it look spiritual, spiritual, spiritual. Everything, it is what I saw in the dream. They don't see real things. They only see in the dream. They only see in the dream. They live by the dream. I saw in the dream that if I go out today, something will happen to me, so I don't go out. And tomorrow they wake up, and the devil lies to them, you know, and shows them something. So that means every year, you see them, they are not doing anything. Zero. The revelation I see these days, they are negative, negative, negative. Because of that, I'm not doing anything. Nonsense. <laughs> But the weapon of our warfare is not Kana. It's what? Mighty in God. So what are you doing with the mighty power of God? Wake up in the morning and the devil begins to lie to you. Employ the mighty, the mighty power. Pull down the stronghold and jump and pass and go and go your way. And go out. There is an assurance that you will go out and they will do what? And come back. By the grace of God. That's it. Oh, praise God. I just wanted to settle your spirit. 
this introduction. Let me tell you what will happen these three days. And I'm excited when I'm giving revelation. Today, we shall break down and give you understanding about the nature, the nature and the workings of obstacles. Oh, sorry, hindrances. Of course, hindrances, there are obstacles, but it's okay. Hindrances. How, you know, talk about meaning, talk about the oppression, how we operate. Shall talk about the oppression of hindrance by obstruction, disruption, and corruption. Then tomorrow, we shall talk about hindrance meets you at the gate. So you cannot cross, you cannot pass to pass through the gate of destiny into glory without first of all meeting and dealing with hindrance which means every time the Lord is taking you to higher levels the first greeters you meet will be hindrances Paul says a mighty effectual door has been done what? opened unto me but great are what? adversities hindrances hindrances praise God Every time there is a mighty door, there are mighty hindrances. Every time there is a mighty opportunity. So how do you, how do you know that a mighty thing is coming? Watch out for the difficulty you will meet, the obstacles you will meet, the hindrances. So rather than use hindrances to surrender, you see the magnitude of hindrance to know the magnitude of the great, of the thing that is coming. You know, what is coming is so beautiful that the devil hates it and the devil is fighting and the devil is fighting. The devil is fighting. So big obstacles should excite you, should in, give you information that the opportunity that is coming is so mighty. Rather than big obstacle breaking you and making you feel depressed. So every time I want to break out, I break through and the devil comes and he weighs me down and you get angry and you get depressed and you surrender. No, it should excite you and encourage you. <laughs> it is called reverse paranoia. <laughs> so <laughs> instead of it intimidating you, it excites you. Wow. So when you see strong opposition, you know, wow, mighty season is about being better. Glory to God. Am I, am I communicating? Glory to God. This is how you should begin to see. You want to walk in, rather Because the devil can lie to you each time you want to go into something very beautiful and the devil begins to press button here, here, and there, and there, and there. And you begin to say, maybe it's not the will of God for me. Maybe God doesn't want me to. Maybe, maybe nonsense nonsense. The plan of God is that you prosper in all things even as your, it has, as your soul. If your soul prospers it is the will of God that you prosper in that thing. In that thing that you want to do that the enemy, the enemy. So you have to discern. Is this God telling me this is not it? Rather than just use obstacle to discern. You have to go back to God. Is this obstacle, is this hindrance telling me that something mighty is coming or is this hindrance telling me God is not in this way? So tomorrow, today we shall look at the Old Testament, few things in the Old Testament that will help us understand this. Then tomorrow we shall deal with the New Testament. We shall look at two scriptures in the New Testament. Then on Saturday we shall face the altar of hindrances. It shall be a very, very serious ministry on Saturday. We shall deal with altars of hindrances against the next generation. Intergenerational hindrances. Altars. How they operate. Or how, how they operate and we shall it shall be an opportunity to break them. It shall be a moment to anoint our children, speaking to pregnant women and those, those who are having hindrances in conceiving. What is it that the enemy is afraid of concerning the seed that you have? What is it that the enemy, the enemy was afraid of when, when, when Rachel did not have children immediately? When, when, when Hannah did not have children immediately? What is it that, you know, now, as you see Samuel, you understand what the devil was trying to do. Come on, come on, come on, come on. As you see Joseph, you begin to understand what the devil was trying to do. <laughs> praise God. I say praise God. Yeah. Understanding is very, very important. Glory to God. Okay, so let's first of all, before, uh, before we break into the meaning of hindrance, rise and lift up your right hand. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ, every word that comes to my spirit increases my passion, increases my fire, increases my power. Every word that comes is a weapon in my mouth by which I gain victory. 
For these words are spirits and these words are life in the name of Jesus Christ. Be seated. So if you hear a word that makes sense, so you start speaking. Start speaking. Take note of it. Speak it. Note it down for prayer. That's why sitting down, this is the time to do things, draw things in your journal. Some prayer points so that comes from the revelation of the word of God. Just write it. The personal remnant that comes. This is how you benefit from the word like this. To our application of it. You don't go and sit down like we are doing philosophy. Philosophy is a theoria. Theoria. Something that is not expected. You don't use philosophy to, to build build a beast. Um, philosophy in the ancient, ancient understanding of it was a lazy, non-utilitarian, non lazy non-utilitarian knowledge. Knowledge that was known for the sake, the beautiful form of knowledge, not to be applied. So the ancient Greece despised application of knowledge. That's, that's what makes Europe different from America. The philosophy that drives American continent is, is pragmatism. A man came, I think it should be William James, that brought about issue of, does it work? If it doesn't work, then it is useless. But in Europe, every, things are, you know, rationalism. So a, a lot of speculation. That's why Europe is behind when it comes to invention, when it comes to innovation. And the Roman Catholic Church and other churches that came from the European continent is laid back till tomorrow in, renov in innovation. New things, are sus people are suspicious of new things. And Pentecostalism is American based. And you can also see application. Friendliness with technology and innovation and all of that. You know, so anyway uh, that one so you are not sitting down here in ancient classical um, greek knowledge uh, colosseum where you sit down to non no nonsensical knowledge for the sake of doing we are here to have technological understanding of operational operations in the spirit so this is spiritual this is this is spiritual this is spiritual technology am i communicating technology is always about application of knowledge how do we apply this in order to achieve this? So when we are sitting here, sir, we are dealing with, with, um, with spiritual technology. Glory to God. That means you need to have the diagram. You have to have formula, this plus this. It looks like it's equal to this. If we apply it in this way, this way, you know, you, know, you just have to be... <laughs> oh, praise God. You are, I, when I have my church members, I will know them. Some of you are, don't, 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 you, you are not yet my church members. And church members, you, you, you're making note that your children will wake up in the future and see your note and they fear you. They say the generation of Papa, these guys touch heaven and they get excited to know more. Praise God. The meaning of hindrance. This is just from my knowledge and my mind. I love my mind and just let's talk about my mind and maybe looking at dictionary. So this one I'm not telling you the Bible says hindrance is what gets in the way of something or somebody. Hindrance is what gets in the way. You want to pass through a particular way and something gets in your way. Something gets in your way, interferes, does not allow you to pass through. Or to pass through easily. That's hindrance. Hindrance. Hindrance is what gets in the way of you succeeding. What gets in the way of you prospering. What gets in the way of you marrying. What gets in the way of you, of you graduating. What gets in the way of you being promoted. What gets in the way of you building your business. What gets in the way of you building ministry? What God has put in your hand and has called you to do? What gets in the way of you raising your family? What gets in the way of you settling? Settling. What gets in the way of you having your children? What gets in the way of you achieving your dreams? Of meeting your targets? Of meeting your mark? What gets in the way? That is hindrance. Did you get that? Hindrance is what blocks. What blocks? What blocks? What blocks? I watched, I watched, I watched a match yesterday. Um, England and... Um, I'm sorry. England and um, Netherlands. And there was a particular 
particular goal that will have settled everything. And the Dutch guy just went and held the ball just on the line. The goalkeeper missed it. Everybody and the, the, the man, the defender just went and stopped the ball on the line. Just there. So <laughs> what? That's real hindrance. <laughs> that is real hindrance. So if you look at football formation of a team, there are people prepared to hinder you. And you know, you don't see those who do defend. The back, we used to call them back men. <laughs> back, this one defends is simple. Back men. Ta, they are not lekpa lekpa people. You don't really see skinny guys who are defenders. Ta, you have to have something. You have to be a little bit intimidating. Intimidating. You know, that's it. So you, it takes something that is intimidating to get in the way of another. So hindrances are not for more hindrances and not cow skin. They are not. They are not for more. The demons that hinder people from becoming something, they are, they are strong. They are arranged to defend the goalposts of Satan. And there is no scoring. I was having a meeting today and somebody said something about somebody. And said, oh, the person is so wonderful. Very brilliant, so wonderful, but has not been able to translate what he has, who he is, into manifestation. I said, whoa, that means a whole lot to me immediately without me having to talk about it. Because if it happens to one person, that's what the devil wants for everyone. Great, but useless. Mighty, but begging. Intelligent, but foolish. So the devil loves the bot in a story. That's why the scripture talks about Naaman. Naaman was a mighty man in battle through whom the Lord gave victory to Aram. But he was a leper. The devil is not, it does, is not troubled about you being extraordinary. But he will introduce a bot in your life. That's it. Hindrance is just a bot. Just, just be beauty bot. And that is what changed the life of a man called the first son, the first son of Reuben, the first son of Jacob. Oh, my first. Oh, mighty. Oh, my excellent. Oh, the first true, the first fruit of my deeds. Bot. Bot. Come on. Look for that scripture for me. Genesis chapter 49. Search it out for me. I'm talking about, but this is what hindrance does. Hindrance is not, it's not against you being extraordinary. Being the first and the best. That's, that's what, the devil arranges the worst of the demons, the back demons, the back men. In the village, we don't understand what it means to be defense, defender. He, said, oh, he plays defense and all of that. Who told you? Back men. Back men. When you see their hips, their laps, and their thighs, you know this one is backing something. This one is an obstacle. <laughs> this one is hindrance, design. Some of those defenders, they are not, very, they are not known to be very tall. They can be huge and short. <laughs> very intimidating. And the way we were trained to play football, I never played, but I used to know how they play. Bring him down. They just bring you down. And in the village, the rules don't apply. If they break your leg, they take you to Abi Akbar. That is uh, uh, somebody who does the ball. <laughs> he will straighten you, but you will know you played football in the village. Reuben, you are my firstborn. My might and the beginning of my strength. Ex the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Next verse, come on. Unstable. But unstable, that is it. Unstable as water, you shall not. That unstable as water is the board. But you shall not excel. That's it. That's what. So it is what blocks. It is what blocks. What makes a great mind useless? What makes a great intellect unproductive? What makes a great spirit ineffective what makes a great life empty what makes a great vision poor and bereft of content content what makes a great future 
useless. What makes a great army helpless? What makes a great nation? But Nigeria has such a, such a great vast array of credentials when it comes to greatness. But, but, they bought just one thing. Bought. That's all. So because of that, people are Japan. Because of just one bought. Nigeria is the, which country in Europe is like Nigeria? None. There's no nation in Europe. None. Now people will run to the UK, run to places to go and be slaves, to go and wash cups, to go and, and be very happy being treated like they don't belong. Now many people are doing great there and who have reasons to be there. Now too many people just don't have reasons to go there because they have nothing to add to them as value, just to, be, just to be, add to the insult that they give to us, that we are nuisance and that we are coming there to corrupt their system. And that they should send us to one African nation and make and those the African nation will make money from sending people like who just run away from their nation. So the obstacle blocks, hindrance is what blocks. Hindrance, hindrance obstructs. What obstructs? Hindrance, it what stops? Hindrance, what stops? You run so fast, but you come and, 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 and then you stop. Why? Because something has blocked you and you check here. You check there. There is no way. And you try to jump, you cannot jump. And whatever was coming after you uh, reaches you. Reaches you. So meets, meets you there. Those who are gone ahead of them meet you there. And they are coming and they are passing because your obstacle, your hindrance is not necessarily the hindrance of others. So don't think what stops you stops everyone. I don't know where I'm communicating. This is the issue. This is how mighty people are overtaken and made irrelevant in life. What stops you? What blocks you? What, what blocks you, what obstructs you, what stops you, what gets in your way may not necessarily get in the way of another. He said, oh, economic situation, oh, everywhere, things are so hard. Things are so hard, people are building. Oh, things are so hard. Things are so hard, people are building businesses now. New opportunities are emerging now. And new billionaires are emerging now. New wealthy people are emerging now. Oh, things are so hard. And fresh opportunities in careers are emerging. Oh, things are so tough. And fresh opportunities in professions are emerging now. So what stops, what, what, break, what breaks the business? Look at during COVID-19, some businesses were wiped away and then Zoom. And other businesses. Amazon, Jeff Bezos became the wealthiest person on earth by so much margin. Why? What locked people down and wiped away their business? Transferred wealth and value to Rise to your feet. Say in the name of Jesus Christ. Obstacles will no longer obstruct me. Obstacles will make me. Say in the name of Jesus. By the help of grace. I leverage obstacles. Hindrances. I stand upon you and I rise. I stand upon you and I fly. I stand upon you. Say, hindrance, you cannot stop me. Hindrance, you cannot obstruct me. Hindrance, you cannot stop me. Hindrance, you cannot obstruct me. Hindrance, you cannot get in my way. You can only lift me. Speak those words. Speak like you mean it. Hindrance, you don't have permission to obstruct me. You don't stop me. You promote me. You are an opportunity for my elevation. You are an opportunity for my transition into greater things and greater places. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Be seated. Did you see what I saw now? Wonderful. Very wonderful. In every area, in ministry, ministry, obstacle. During COVID-19, some churches have not recovered from that moment. Some ministries exist, I mean, cease to exist from that time till now. They have not been able. But that was when what, man, what God cannot do does not exist. Emerged. Emerged. 
and a new frontier of ministry broke out before everybody. So that including those who have never appeared on any screen at all, they had to look for whatever you can use to appear on the screen. You have to appear. Praise God. Because COVID-19 created an opportunity for ministry. From that time till now, some people are still doing their churches. On Sunday, perhaps people come, but some other meetings is online and all of that because of that. But that was the end of some ministries. <laughs> so in life, you have to position yourself in such a way that no matter what is going to happen, it will take you up. It will not bring you down. Why? Because every obstacle that stops one person is an opportunity that raises another person. Come on, am I communicating? So you don't, don't be on the failure side of life. That is what it means to position yourself for success. Don't prepare yourself. Don't, the problem we have, and I see a lot of people in church, they are so ready to, to personalize problem. You know that this time affects me. As if you were waiting for it to affect you. You know, the things, the way things are now, I can no longer do what, I can no longer continue. I can no longer, as if you're already prepared to fail and you were waiting for this time to come. So if, if, if times will not serve you, what is the purpose of knowing God? The purpose of knowing God is that you live a life that is above human. That's, that's the main thing about knowing God. The main thing about knowing God is that you have a, a stakeholder in your life that makes you above nature. There is a, the primary stakeholder, the foundation upon which you stand, the stone from which you are quarried and cut out from, makes you above nature. That is what it means to be the God's son through the sun. The sun is a life-giving spirit. The second Adam. Life-giving spirit. That means in a condition of death, it is the son that gives life. And if you are made son in the son, it means in a time of hopelessness, you become the distributor of hope. So you don't wait, you don't prepare for hopelessness to take you down. When things went bad, when things... Uh, We are here in Goshen. I, when we were in the center of the city, just seeing it everywhere is filled. Any little thing. Because you, the center of the city, the major, everyone, people passing through, and my, my son sitting down here. He came to Grace Family, encountered God. Almost every, every, every service, every meeting is here. Because he has a, he's a proof. But he was just passing. He just came out from the last moment of his frustration on a, in a useless day. And he said, he saw people in Ibom. He said, what is happening? They say, church, he came in and got a revelation, got a company, got a life. <laughs> and he's a different person now. So when it was time to move to Goshen, a lot of suggestions, you know, we have to have arrangement. Church has to pay, has to make available transportation to be bringing people. And Sarah has made a proposal. <laughs> You know, how buses will be going out to bring people and then take people. <laughs> and it was such a wonderful thing. And when we are talking about money to buy diesel, <laughs> yes, sir, those who are watching me from the UK and from Lagos and all that, we are in Uyo. <laughs> this is Uyo. Our basic things actually have to fuel, <laughs> fuel generator to do basic things. And then you, are, you have not been able to settle that. And you are talking about providing transportation. And me, I'm thinking like, Jesus, this Jesus that I'm intending to preach to them in Goshen used to preach in the desert. And people will come and fill the desert. And they will be so hungry that they will be challenged to give them food. And here I am. And Goshen is just a few minutes from the city center. And then um, we have to come and borrow from government. I mean, from Zenith Bank in order to make available transportation to bring people may not be able to even put off rick. <laughs> what, what a wonderful advice. I heard it. I said, thank you. Let us continue. Let's move forward. So we are still moving forward, right? Praise God. We are moving forward. One day we'll have Goshen Transit and all of that as well will break out. 
but it will not come as a result of the poverty of this you a spirit that cannot stand for me my understanding is that this is a time that you are to have your own car why if you really desire the lord i cannot miss out on what he's doing and i come under the rain i walk in the mud and in the sun and and everyone will just look admire you see how he treks see how he suffers because bang, open that door and lift him and then before you know it beautiful opportunity he said hey wait does it take people 20 years to rise it takes one second just one second People go to bed useless and wake up mighty the following day. People go to, go to bed in the prison. Joseph woke up in a prison thinking he would still go to bed in the prison. He woke up in the prison and became the ruler, the second in command of the greatest kingdom, the greatest nation of that time. That same day, in less than 24 hours, he made a transition from here. So the story of Joseph has inspired me forever. He was just delicately interested in what was in front of him. He was not interested in what was not there. He was just busy with what was there. Where he was. He made life happen there. So this opportunity of coming to Goshen that some people have resigned. I cannot. Oh, and the things are said. I cannot. I cannot. This is a time for people to be settled in their mobility, in their houses, land coming forth for in their neighborhood. People buying properties and building. Uh, I have seen people. Uh, I've seen people during COVID-19 that people are so poor and all of that. Somebody sowed a seed and somebody, because it's, she sowed a seed, opportunity came up and she was back to come and pick up the land and as at that time there was no money and eventually she reluctantly accepted the land money started coming and she bought the land started building she, she had swimming pool in her. if you go there it looks like one only there was a time I volunteered to stay in the boys quarter and she said no my pastor you cannot do that when we were in between accommodation I said why don't you just come and stay with my family in this boys quarter simply don't even think about that in the COVID-19 season just in a flip, somebody moved from, from being in a in no place into p having property and building a beautiful country home with swimming pool, beautiful facility. So this is it, the obstacle. God, God does not write your name in failure on obstacles. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Not for obstacles to bring you down. I want you to rise and be defiant. Say, obstacle. Say, hindrance. What hinders? What has been designed to hinder me? What has been designed to obstruct me? What has been, what has been arranged to get in my way? Hear me and hear me well. By the blood of Jesus Christ, I turn you into stepping stone. I turn you into my rising opportunity. Say, I turn you into my promotion. I turn you into my rising. I turn you into my prevail. I turn you. I turn you into what blesses me. I turn you into what raises me. I turn you into what elevates me. I turn you by the blood of you. Say in the name of you, I turn you. Turn. I turn you into lifting. I turn you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Be seated. Very important note about about hindrance. The greater your purpose, the greater the hindrance that you will face in life. If you have a purpose over millions, you cannot have hindrance of just hundred. If you have a purpose of billions, you cannot have just hindrance of a, a, a few hundred. Hindrance, I had already told you this, they come proportional in proportion to the magnitude the weightiness of the purpose that you carry. Sir, I carry a big purpose. I have been mightily hindered. 
There's no, there are few, there are, there are few revelations that I will teach that will have the same kind of correlation and resonation with my life as issue of hindrance. I've been in that. I have had to confront and meet hindrance from A to every, at every point. At every point. My interest is here is not to do the chronicling, the chronicle of my hindrance. That's not what, but God has taught me something. I have big purpose. I don't know what God wants to do in my life and with my life, but I know he has a purpose and that purpose is not cheap because I have met hindrances. I've met hindrances. <laughs> I've met hindrances. I've met people who make a big ministry out of obstructing me. Just They make themselves relevant by being hindrances. They just give themselves relevance and a name and an assignment give people an assignment assignment <laughs> before I was ordained a Catholic priest the person who was overseeing that time looked for everywhere on earth to stop me and when my brother a middle level military officer I think it was I think a, con, a lieutenant colonel in the army yes a lieutenant colonel, colonel in the army the guy had arrived and they were excited and preparing for my ordination. The man looked at him. He said, You are his brother. He said, Don't be excited and just think that he will be ordained. It's his you woke a procession that people are usually re removed from procession as they are moving into church for ordination. And hopefully, we hope to take him out of procession. He, told, he, he just told my brother directly it was such a big mission for him that he had to tell an innocent man who had nothing to do with the system and my brother could not understand could not understand <laughs> let's not go there <laughs> I have seen people prospering prospering making big prosperity out of bringing hindrance oh I have seen that. I have seen it so sometimes I used to be worried. And I now began, I became, God began to teach me that this shows something. This shows something. So hindrance, the greater your purpose in life, the greater the hindrance. So how do you know that you are carrying a mighty purpose? Ah, check the level of hindrance. Just check. Check it, check it, check it. Okay, let's talk briefly, very briefly, on the workings of hindrance. So they wanted to do what we call ground, you know, laying the ground, the, the, the groundworks, setting the foundation for the operation against hindrances. Hindrance works in three basic ways. There may be hundred ways, but these are three basic ways that I, I choose to look at the workings of hindrance. Hindrance works through obstruction. Obstruction, obstruction. Hindrance works through disruption, and hindrance works through corruption. Obstruction means blocking. Disruption means confusion, causing things to fall apart. Confusion, things are in disarray. Corruption means spoiling it from within. So hindrance operates in three ways. Obstruction to block you. Lecturers, some lecturers just make themselves real agents of obstruction, of hindrance. They, they say, I will stop you. See, in this department, you will not graduate with others. But people like that. People will say, you, as long as I live in this department, you will not have PhD. <laughs> Means... I will stop you. So there is disruption. Disruption causing confusion. Breaking things apart. Things can no longer hold together. So walking through confusion. Disrupting things. Confusion. Chaos. Things breaking apart and falling apart. And there is corruption. The spoiling of things from within. The spoiling of things. From within. If we have enough time to study and go through this and God is God is just helping me because as these things are coming up, uh, uh, something is coming up in my spirit that we need to start 
documenting and putting things together. So the first lady, let's engage on this. The spiritual warfare over the years. I think we have, can start putting things together. Okay, now let's, the oppression of hindrance is just about, what is the purpose of hindrance? The workings of hindrance is in obstruction, disruption, and corruption. Did you see that? And all of this in the scripture. We, can, we have scriptures to look at them. Whether we have time or not is another thing. We have scriptures for obstruction, disruption, and corruption. And the oppression of hindrance is about just two things. But one thing ultimately. Hindrance has as its purpose, as its goal, to stop ultimately. Stop you from achieving. Stop you from imaging. Stop you from succeeding. Stop you from living. Stop you from accomplishing. That's the ultimate purpose of hindrance. To stop. You are on a journey to somewhere you are, you are studying to become an engineer. Stop. Studying to become an astronaut. Stop. Beginning to build business hindrances. Stop. So wherever you see projects that are not completed, uncompleted un projects, wherever you see projects that are just left halfway and all of that, then you see the oppression, the, the, the testimony and the testimonial of hindrances. Hindrance bring about projects not being completed. Inconclusive. Not properly, not properly finished. So you see people, they, they build, and um, they just roof, but they cannot move in. It's not completed. And projects, you start, it reaches a point, you abandon it. Hindrance, it means something is getting in the way. Something is blocking. Something is obstructing, blocking. Something is disrupting, causing confusion. That, and when there is confusion, you lose concentration. The resources that were meant for it to be finished now are scattered because of disruption. I don't know where I'm communicating. The, resource, the attention to study some people, once they get to the point of examination, there is a disruption. Either sickness or there is something, maybe parents or some health, some issue that eventually they could not continue because attention is now dissipated and, and spread thin such that no, you can no longer sit down to go through it. People talking about doing, doing their program, uh, post, 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 whatever. For 10 years, I've been, be, I've been on master's, trying to get master's, trying to have my PhD, yes. Trying to get married, eventually people start having children. Every time we plan wedding, something will just happen. And we just, at, at some moment, we just say, maybe, maybe it's not the will of, let's just move in together and start practicing and pretending like we are married. Hoping one day we will eventually marry. Rise to your feet. Say, in the name of Jesus. Every disruption. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every obstruction. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ. Every corruption. Aiming at stopping me. From getting into God's plan for me. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ. By the weapon of our warfare, which is mighty in God, unto the pulling down. Say, I pull you down. I pull you down. What obstructs? I pull you down. What corrupts? I pull you down. What disrupts? I pull you down. What stops? I pull you down. What blocks? I pull you down. In the name of Jesus, you are not praying. Halaboshatata. I pull you down. Salamose prekata. I pull you down. Masikata. Labrakando sata. I pull you down. Shalakato prekata. I pull you down. Sando to melebraknanda. Sando to prekapalata. I pull you down. Landikando so prekata. Maliato Messi Katata, I pull you down. 
Shanda kata pele katola. Malamondo to pray. I pull you down for the weapons of our warfare. Anokana, mighty in God. By the weapon of my warfare in Christ, mighty in God, I pull down the stronghold of what blocks. I pull down the stronghold of what corrupts, what disrupts, what obstructs. I pull down. Pull down in the spiritual place. I pull down the economic place. I pull down in the emotional place. I pull down in the moral place. I pull down in the economic place. I pull down in the financial place. I pull down in the professional place. I pull down in the career place. I pull down. I pull down. I pull down. I pull down hindrances in marriage. I pull down hindrance against joy in marriage. Hindrance against joy in marriage. Hindrance against pleasure in marriage. Hindrance against breakthrough in finances. Hindrance against breakthrough in ministry. Hold on. Halabo shakata. Manelele ya no sitalabo sipra. Manele bro sekata la manda. Masika to prelata. Malata ya brakanda. Sema kapole brakata. Lamo soto preka palandata. Lando to mesia kanda. Lato mesikata. Malabo shemele brakato. Labra katata in ranches against uh, marriage. Uh, la katata tamaso prekata in ranches against employment. Siata malabra kando se prekata in ranches against rising. Labra soto prekata in ranches against family. Malakata tata malabro se katalabra in ranches in the place of the church, the ministry. Ah, hindrance is against the move of the gospel. Alabo shakmana, shalabro sekata, malabo se prekata alabasa. Say, I pull you down in the name of Jesus. Let me hear your amen like fire. Maybe seated, maybe seated, maybe seated, maybe seated. You just play, prepare to pray. Prepare because this all of this is to give you resources so that as you go home and uh, the prayer belt in the night as you wake up and just pray, just pray. So the purpose of hindrance is to stop you. And if it does not stop you, then the next thing is to slow down. So you see some children that are extraordinary. And the devil does everything to block them and stop them. And he cannot. But you see something. They are like 10 years behind their mates. Seven years behind their mates. Five years behind their mates. Hindrance. When getting in their way. Whether this hindrance comes as drugs. A lot of young people, it reaches a stage in school, they get involved, get hooked in masturbation, in pornography, get hooked in drugs. You see some, the brightest of stories. There's a young man that I know, a medical doctor, related to me, um, once shared with me about the school they went to, a school in Calabar, school they went to, a school like most of the people, their children of um, well-to-do parents. To be there means you have somebody who will pay a bill, either your parents or your guardians or whatever. Say so drugs was a major thing. Drugs. So a lot of young people, teenagers in secondary school, on drugs. Now, as a medical doctor married with children, has his own clinic and employs doctors. Has traveled outside the country, taught it, had some kind of advanced qualification in his 
medical career, came back, established his clinic, and has people working under him and for him. See, some of his friends are still calling him now to ask for money to do drugs. Say on these school friends. <laughs> some of those people, perhaps they were better in intellect, better in brilliance, in intelligence, but hindered. What is potential when it is when hindered? What is brilliance and intelligence when it is hindered? As parents, I don't know what you do with your children. From pregnancy to the time they walk through. And children, they take such a long time to grow into a certain level. So at every stage, what is it that you are speaking? So a lot of parents go to bed and sleep. Sleep through the, the growing years. The growing years of their children. They make no investment. Against the work of Satan. When these children and the work of the devil has gone, grown mature. Hindrances, the seed of hindrances have grown mature in their life. And then they begin to run helter-skelter looking for deliverance here and there. I, I, by the grace of God, we've been given ministry for deliverance, casting out demons and breaking yokes. But it doesn't excite me much. The greatest excitement for me in ministry is teaching people strategically giving people strategic mindset in the Christian living, in wisdom and knowledge, knowledge and wisdom, revelation, to make sure certain prayers are never your prayer point. So for those who come through us in preparing them for marriage, what a lot of people have to go through in marriage and all of that, if they just walk by those principles that they are taught over the months, Certain prayer points, you don't pray them. Certain issues, you don't see them. Certain, no, you shall know the truth and the truth shall do what? There are two levels of deliverance. There is a deliverance before problem. That's proactive deliverance, preventive deliverance. There is deliverance after problem. That is the one that breaks people's bones. By the time they, they are done you know, delivering, their waist is disconnected from their spine. And their bones are broken. So they now have, need rehabilitation after deliverance. Because the deliverance had crushed them. After deliverance, their skull has shifted in shape. <laughs> in the process of beating them to come out, come out, come out, come out. By the time they come out, they now look oblong. <laughs> oblong. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A lot of people after deliverance, their lives are never the same. Disjointed and disconnected. The point is to live strategically, powerfully in the world. Such that certain things, do, they don't come up. The word of God does not give them room to come up. The life you live does not open the door. It is more important to me than raising the dead. That you live and you don't have to die unnecessarily. Or minister of raising that you raise the dead, it makes people very powerful. What of stopping people from dying? Nobody talks about that one. Because you don't even know what will have killed you has been prevented by the knowledge. I am interested in that. I'm interested in that. Oh, by the grace of God, we raise the dead wherever we find them, where the Lord permits us to raise the dead. Certain deaths you don't need to raise so that you don't increase trouble of the world. Because some people have to rest in peace. So those who just look for deaths to raise. <laughs> Certain, certain, certain people, when they die, write the R.I.P., rest in peace. It means peace has entered the house because somebody has died. They just, just, I'm sorry, let's just move on. Praise God. I say praise God. Glory to God. But by the grace of God, we are raising the dead everywhere. But above us, stopping the dead from taking place. Glory to God. So slowing down. So ups, hindrance is to stop. If you cannot stop, slow down. So a lot of hindrances, every day you wake up, hindrances are just saying, stop. Or if you don't stop, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. So, so a journey that should be 500 kilometers per hour, 1,000 kilometers per hour, and it just, I mean, when you fly international flight, fly Emirates, and then you just, you are given all the data on the screen for you to see what, what 
is what is happening as you guys are in the in the middle of the nowhere in the air and you don't even feel anything. The speed and all of that, you just know, wow, this is incredible. And the devil just stands somewhere with the bad weather. Boom, boom, go slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. If you don't stop, if you don't crash, you slow down. And sometimes, unfortunately, there's crashing. Destinies are crashing here because of hindrances. Destinies are crashing. Ministries are crashing, crashing. And marriages are crashing. Children are crashing in school. Businesses are crashing. Life crashing everywhere you turn to. As I'm talking to you, you know people who are crashing currently. You know people who are crashed. You know people that are being rehabilitating, being rehabilitated from the experience of crashing, bad experience of crashing. Oh, just slow down. So go slow, take it easy. So you see traffic, people warning. No, one kilometer per hour, one kilometer per year, one kilometer per decade. So you slow down what people do. In a second, you do it in 10 years. And by the time you are done doing it, you feel so old. And you are so old and so feeble and so, so annoyingly pained that life is not worth living. Why? Obstacles, hindrances, obstructing, disrupting, and corrupting, and stopping, and slowing down. In the name of Jesus, by the power, in the weapon of our warfare, mighty in God, the blood by which we prevail, I pull down those strongholds. Say, I pull down those strongholds. Hindrances, I pull you down. You shall no longer slow me down. You shall no longer stop me. You shall no longer slow me down. You shall no longer stop me. Are you praying? You shall no longer slow me down. Ah, you shall no longer slow me down. Katole masi pray la bosa. You shall not slow me down. You are not praying. You are not praying. You are not slowing me down. And you are not stopping. I trust you. I trust you. You are infinite. You are the ultimate. I trust you. I trust you, Kalabo Shekhar. You are infinite, Kalabra. You are the ultimate. I trust you. In the name of Jesus Christ. But see there, let's look at obstacle as obstruction. Let's look at, sorry, let's look at hindrance operating through obstruction. In this case, hindrance operates through strifes and battles. One of the ways by which the devil stops, obstructs movement, slows down movement, strives and battles. In one, you don't run with speed when you are fighting. Fighting stops you. We're traveling to somewhere, you get into a community and people in that community, people just rise and begin to fight you. Sometimes you no longer run in the direction you are going. The fight can now take you through a diversion. I don't know where I'm communicating. So the devil uses battles. Battles, strives, hostilities, strives. Exodus chapter 17 from verse 8 chronicles the first battle of the people of Israel. Chronicles, the first part. So when you talk about hindrance, you can look at the journey of the people of Israel from, from Egypt to the promised land. And then you will see how hindrance is operated. You can study and see the different manifestations and workings of hindrance. The different manifestations and operations of hindrance, the spirit of hindrance. Hindrance and obstruction operating through strifes and battles. Exodus chapter 17 from verse 8. Said, the Amalekites came and attacked Israel at Rephidim. They were going on their way. There was no fight. There was no problem. They came 
And as they came, the next thing they did was what? They fought. They came and fought with Israel in the refugee. In refugee. At that point, the subject matter on the lips of everyone is no longer moving forward. When a family gets into fights, the problem is no longer sending somebody to the best school. That's no longer the conversation. It's no longer which of the best schools. Oh, our son, our daughter had, and, um, had passed entrance examination to this and that and that high, the best of the grades of the school. And we had made savings for this. And now there is a, a hot battle going on. A case is no longer which of, the, which of them, which, the best of them to send. The place is a, the worst school possible. The one that will not take money since money now is diverted into fight. Now you know. Stopping. Stopping greatness from taking place. Stopping glory from emerging. Hindrance. Battles. Bringing battles. Battles you may not even know they are battles. Things that divert attention. Concentration is no longer making a headway and progressing with speed. Concentration is how to survive. Because when it comes to battle, issue now is either death or what? And the issue, when it comes to die, death or life, the issue is not the best school. The issue is no longer, it's no longer speed. The issue is survivor. And so you see a lot of people, a lot of people, they are on survival mode. They just want to survive. Look at, this is the language the devil is making everyone speak this season. Eyum Zedia. So you hear, what business is happening now? Oh, people are just eating. So food stuff. What else? So nothing is really moving. So people, everybody has been reduced to eating mode. Eating mode. The tendency is that now that they say people, that there's hunger everywhere, now some people are eating more because money is taken from everything. And we cannot be old. Let's just eat. We cannot do this. Let's just say, if you are building, it means if you, if you were to eat three, you could say, let's eat one and just build. But now that we are not building, let's just increase it to two or three. That's our market. That's why issue of food stuff becomes a major thing now. Because, you know, because the language, it is sold by the devil to everybody's mind. Champions are no longer thinking of prevailing. Champions are thinking of just surviving. You will am poor. Let's just eat. By the grace of God, we are eating. That becomes the greatest testimony. Yes, it is a reality that are challenges. You know, can I tell you something? The greatest battle is in the mind. So what is happening this season is that the devil has given people philosophy, theology, has given people scriptures, has given people understanding in such a way to make them small, and slow them down and stop them. So they feel comfortable stopping. That's the greatest of the battle. That the, once there is a battle, you are not thinking of moving forward. You are just thinking of survival. So you look at you now, what is it? They, what, are you thinking of anything other than just eating? Just surviving this moment. Oh. I know the scripture in the word of God that talks about God gave the people of Israel fire by night, a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day so that they will move by day and by night. That was the arrangement. So God did not make arrangements for night to stop his people. As they, left, as they left Egypt, God did not think of night. Every time God asked them to stay, it was because it was time to stay. And there will always be reason. But when he said move, night was not a factor. So what you call, what you call hardship now is a night. For those who understand what it means to walk with God at an understanding, covenant, obedience, submission level in knowledge and revelation, this time should not stop you from moving forward. Why? It is a night. 
That is why God made available his presence as pillar of fire by night. And the Lord went before them by day. Exodus chapter 13 verse 21. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so as to go by what? Come on. So as to do what? Go. Not, not to steal it by night and walk by day. It is the spirit that gives life. This word that I speak to you. Our spirit. The word. <laughs> Revelation of the word. So you cannot. The day you buy into that understanding. Oh, this season, you know. I wanted to do this. But this season I cannot do. Every help is gone. Every miraculous intervention from heaven is placed on hold. Oh, it's not ready. It's not available for miraculous intervention. It's not available for provision. It's not available for multiplication. Why? The mind has collapsed. The mind has accepted. That's why if you go to that second Corinthians chapter 10 and talking about in verse 4, look at, look at what the scripture is talking about in verse 4. In verse 4, come on, come on, come on in verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not kind of mighty in God for pulling down what? Stronghold. Now look at some of the strongholds. Look at some of the strongholds in verse 5. Some of the strongholds say, casting down what? Arguments. Arguments justifying sluggishness. Arguments justifying slow, slowness. You know, it's okay. It's okay for us to go this way. You know, things are so hard. Argument projected by the intelligence of hell. You know, this is how things are. So you don't, you know, it's, it's not peculiar to us. This is just how it is. Arguments. And every high thing that does what? Exhaust itself. Not against God. Nothing can exalt itself against God. But it's against your knowledge of God. Because you prosper according to, you don't prosper according to God. You prosper according to your knowledge of God. Your victory is not according to God. Your deliverance is not according to God. Your breakthrough is not according to God. Your breakthrough is according to your knowledge of God. Your advancement your increase, your power is not according to God. According to knowledge gives you participation. Knowledge gives you portion. Knowledge gives you inheritance among the saints. And when we talk about inheritance, we are talking about portion. Sir, portion is of sizes. The portion of the first one is double portion. But there's also the portion of um, Abraham gave gifts to other sons. But to Isaac, what did he do? Give all things. Why? And Isaac knew something when he lay down. When he lay down on the wood. The wood altar. Isaac knew. When he woke up from that place, Isaac heard something. Isaac knew he was not normal. Isaac had known something. Isaac had been initiated into the cult of divinity. Isaac was not normal. Isaac was the substitute. Isaac had entered into the mystery of substitution. A lamb from nowhere from heaven had taken the place of Isaac. Isaac was equal to a lamb invisible. Isaac is the firstborn. Is the, is the foreknowledge. Is the foreshadow of the son of God and the mystery of substitution. Do you know I'm God's son? Because of substitution, the son of God took my place. So I carry the weight of the Son of God. I carry the portion of the Son of God. It is to the knowledge, to the extent of my knowledge of who I am, that I prosper. So there are certain things I cannot fast about. If I fast, I fast as worship and service. There are certain things I'm, I cannot just walk into fasting and say I'm fasting about this. It is, it, it is an insult on everything that I know. Are things that are just my rights. 
and I don't fast for my right. I fast as consecration to have time to hear from and be spoken to by my father. So I don't fast for my rights. I can recommend fast, fast to those who are yet to understand this mystery. But when you know it, you are free from certain, certain obligations, certain taxes that you pay to Satan, certain tributes that you pay to toll to, to gates of darkness, toll gates that tell you until, you until you lose your son, you cannot move to the next level, until you lose your this, and you pay your toll, and you just lose your son, and you move on. And in the place of negotiation, you say, well, you don't lose your son, but let him be nonsense. Let him be, let him be useless. Let him not think well. Let him be hopeless. And you will have that negotiation. At least I will not lose my son after much of assignment and running it we talk same he talks same I run I run I run I run I run where will you run run by day by night so that they will walk they will make progress this economic crisis is a night the scripture says there may be tears in the night but morning, so you know you are walking through the night. Yes, you can feel it, but you are moving. I, I don't know what I'm talking to somebody. Joy will not come in the morning if morning meets you in a pit. If morning meets you 20,000 years ago, what joy will you have? Joy comes in the morning because after you've walked through the night, by morning you know thus far the Lord has helped us. Ebenezer, this is how far in this night time, this is how far the Lord has taken us through. This is how far the Lord has helped us. This is how far the Lord has kept us. This is how far. So joy comes in the night because what the enemy meant for evil, God turned it around for God. Come on, come on, come on. I thought, I thought. So I cannot stop her, brother. Begin to say, say, I obstacle, you cannot stop me. Say, I reject every language of Satan. I reject every thought of Satan. I reject every philosophy of Satan. I reject every theology of Satan. I reject every argument of Satan. I reject everything that exalts his servant against the knowledge of God. I uh, I trust you. You are infinite. You are the ultimate. I trust you. You are not praying. Say, so I pull down what speaks nonsense to my spirit. I pull down what tells me I will not make it. Up. I pull down what tells me I will not go through this. I pull down what tells me I should slow down. I pull down what tells me I should, I should break down. I, I pull down whatever tells me I should lie down. I pull down whatever breaks me down. I pull down whatever stops me. Whatever wants to stop, I pull you down. You are infinite. You are the ultimate. Say, no way. I am light by day and by night. The plan of God is that I travel by day. I travel by night. Night time cannot stop me. Government, you don't stop me. Economy, you don't stop me. Issues of life, you don't stop me. Occults, you don't stop me. Demonic power, you don't stop me. Hardship, you don't stop me. I have light by day and by night. I have coverage by day and by night. Arrangement of hindrance to stop. I make a disclaimer. I am not part of those that will be stopped. I am not part of those that will be hindered. I'm not part of those to be obstructed. I'm not part of those to be corrupted. I am not part of those to be disrupted. I am not. I am not. I am not. I am made strong by the hand of the Almighty. For I am helped by the God of Jeshurun. By the God of Jeshurun that helps me. I am helped mightily. 
I trust you as you speak things are breaking obstacles are breaking obstacles are breaking whatever said you will not pass through say I pass through whatever said I will not pass through say I pass through say my spirit can no longer be broken my spirit can no longer be broken my spirit can no longer be broken my spirit can Say no fights will stop me. No battle will stop me. No fights will stop me. No battle will stop me. Gata ta 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 ta. Shala brakata. Zamala brakata. Se brakata. Shala brakata. Se mele brakata. Shala kata masubrakata. Malibroso kapalata. Shanda kanda. Se brekato labra, malabra kando, labre si kato leya, landa tope yanda kata, malabo she brekata, malabra kato, malabra kanda, shakata. Hallelujah, I got rich. Kalabra kando se kata labra kato. Hallelujah, I got rich. Heya kata. Hallelujah. Speaking Labrak Nana, pull down. Alleluia. Agarrens. Alleluia. Agarrens. Forever and always. Alleluia. Labrosica. Pull them down. Pull down what corrupts. What obstructs? Pull down what obstructs. Pull down what corrupts. Pull down what obstructs. Pull down what corrupts. Pull down what hinder. Halabosha kata. Libra kato libra. Say my mind is free from hindrance. My brain is free. My life is free. My understanding is free. Every theology from hell that has taken hold of my mind, I am free from it. La bocha palate, lo brea katala braka, shanda katala braka. Of Malabracato. Speaking, say, I pull down. He rains. I pull down. Say, I pull down. I pull down the obstruction of the mind. I pull down the obstruction of the brain. I pull down the obstruction of knowledge. I pull down the obstruction of knowledge. I pull down the obstruction of knowledge. 
I pull down what stands against the knowledge of God. Everything that exalts itself. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. What corrupts knowledge? What distorts knowledge? What diverts knowledge? Labra Sokata. Obstacle in marriage shall break you. Obstacle in marriage shall break you. Obstacle in marriage shall break you. Obstacle in family shall break you. Obstacle in marriage shall break you. Obstacle in the life of our children shall break you. Obstacle in the life of our children shall break you. Obstacle of drugs shall break you. Obstacle of alcohol shall break you. Obstacle against finances are broken. I break you. Obstacle and sickness. Obstacle and sickness. Walking in sickness. To stop and to break it. I break you down. I break you up. Those two hands and speak. Everything that has been exalting itself against the knowledge of God in your life. 
everything that has been casting shadow over your life and making you see opposition and mountains and never the minds of God in your life. I pull them down now in the name of Jesus. Lift up your two hands. Everything that has sold to you minds, imagination, philosophy, ideas, theology of weakness, ideology of defeat, whatever had been speaking to you, telling you, oh, this time you cannot move forward. You are not expect. Nobody will hold it against you if you don't succeed now. I pull it down in the name of Jesus. Say, in the name of Jesus, I am free from the government of hindrance. My life is free from the government of hindrance. My destiny is free from the administration of hindrance. By the lights of God by day and by night, I move forward. By daytime and by nighttime, difficult times and easy times, bad times and good times, you don't stop me, I move forward. By the lights of the world, in Jesus' name. I want to clap those hands and say, Be seated. You see, the word of God says that your word is a lamb unto my face, a light. And that scripture says to make them, give them light. Give, go back to that Exodus chapter 13. Go back there. By pillar of cloud. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, give them direction. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. All of this reduced to the word of God. Light, the word of God. To lead the way, the word of God. So it is the administration of the word of God that brings about unbreakable and unbroken progress. The word. When you enter into the mystery of the word, obedience is not loss. Because when you obey, sometimes it means you uh, it looks like you have lost something, but obedience is the greatest gain. Because you know, because you obey, there is light by day and by night. I had thought I would be able to do much today, but Ebenezer, so far the Lord has helped us. So you go look at Exodus chapter 17, verse 8 to 16. And this night, you are warring. You are taking the scripture, the understanding in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, 4, 5. You are pulling down battles, strongholds of battles that stop you from moving on. What battles? Identify them. Final battles against final battles that, that divert attention. So at the end of it, five years later, you have not made progress. You have been settling debt. You have been settling issues, quarrel, fight, trouble. See some people, ten years they are in one place, paying the debt, trying to settle the fight. No progress. Nobody talks about moving forward. Let's just eat and just take battles. Exodus chapter 17, verse 8 to 16. By the grace of God, tomorrow we shall look at disruption and corruption and see how, how far we can go from it because it's so much. But when it comes to my ministry, I don't, my interest is not to rush through many things. It's to sit and give your perspective and depth so that you can profit from it. I bless your offering, I bless your tithe, I bless your seed. For those who are online, your, even as we do offering, I want to confirm the GFCC oral was supposed to be online today. So I want us to celebrate GFCC oral <laughs> regional center. My, my children in GFCC oral regional center, it's such a pleasure and a beautiful experience to so welcome you to um, Goshen. So this is the beginning of mighty things that every season like this, 
that those in Oro can join and connects will begin to this is how we move and seven years later at least we have one place that is connecting online and it's that's how it begins just just keep moving just keep moving if you don't stop you will get there come on celebrate celebrate <laughs> hallelujah so for online for tithes and offering tithe offering is a matter of obedience it's not convenience it's obedience um prophets fruit first fruit partnership we are in july we are in a season of paying for, for fresh things, fresh bills paid. It's a partnership or a spontaneous one or renewing or staying on course. Whatever it is that the Holy Spirit leads you to, the regular partners um, doing what is expected. And for those who just want to give one off for prophets offering, whatever gift or thanksgiving prophets offering is a time of God speaking rest and talking about refreshment for those who are connected and then thanksgiving for those who want to spontaneously appreciate God and I trust God that obstacles will save you from this moment in Jesus name rise to your feet say with me father in the name of Jesus Christ I give as worship I give as obedience I give you understanding I give you knowledge and by this giving I take hold of my mighty weapon in you. And I pull down everything that I've been standing against your knowledge, standing against my understanding of my resources, standing against my understanding of my abundance in you. I pull down and I enter into my abundance. My portion, my line, boundary line has fallen onto me. Speak it. Say, boundary line has fallen onto me in wealthy places. Say, I have goodly inheritance in Jesus' name.